To talk more about the separation of church and state and if that line is getting hazier, I'm joined now by Daniel Faraci. He's the director of uh, Grassroots Political Consulting, LLC, and A.J. Johnson, development director for American, American Atheists. Welcome to the both of you. Daniel, I'm going to start with you. Uh, too, much in re too much religious talk in politics today. I don't believe so. We've had an integral amount of religion and politics since our founding fathers, who were a mix of agnostic, Judeo-Christian, natural law, common law, put that all together. And then you fast forward up to brief historical context for the last few decades on both sides of the aisle, the moral majority on the right in the 80s uh, to even transcending from a wartime and some scandal environment. Uh, Clinton used it, embraced religion even more than W in the Southern strategy of what he used. And then you came through this uh, current decade where we face issues like partial birth abortion, Defense of Marriage Act, um, Catholics and what they're dealing with with the health care bill. And it, there are a lot of religious issues, whether right or wrong, that are an integral part of the American political process right now. Uh, AJ, what do you think about that? How much would you say religion dictates today the political discussion? I mean, uh, as you just mentioned, contraception, gay marriage, a lot of these social issues and a lot of airtime dedicated to these subjects. Is there too much religious talk from our politicians? Yes. What do you think? I definitely think there's far too much religious talk and not enough talk on the real issues. Um, like someone mentioned in the earlier segment, we have so many Americans without health care, so many without jobs. Every second that people spend talking about religion is second spent not talking about the real issues. And it, what are the real issues, would you say, are, are being overlooked um, with more time being spent on, on these social issues? Well, I think that the real issues are the economy right now. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, getting Americans working and getting veterans home uh, and in good jobs are the issues that I would see politicians working on. And some say that religion is being politicized because, um, especially now, we have the GOP, the, the race to be the next nominee, and um, that they are catering to a lot of America that do see religion as important. Uh, Daniel, uh, is it possible that religion is being politicized and that candidates are using it as a tool to win votes? Both sides of the aisle do it, as I've said. I mean, the GOP has more of a Catholic base and, and you know, a lot of Southern religious uh, Baptists and other conservatives, but the left is doing it as well. I mean, you see the swing through from congressional to uh, President Obama, Reverend Sharpton, all going through uh, African-American churches in South Carolina, uh, embracing uh, their religion and speaking of it through various speeches and various contexts of talking through different issues, especially even now with the health care bill and uh, Catholics in different segments of society. So, I mean, you could really say this is a bipartisan issue, uh, politicizing religion in American politics. And another huge issue, of course, being the Israeli issue and the support for Israel and how that transcends into the Jewish, Christian, and Catholic communities. So both sides of the aisle are doing it, and they're going to do it throughout this election cycle. Um, AJ, do you agree that it is a bipartisan issue? What, what do you think about I, that? I do think that both sides of the aisle do have this problem, but I think that the right side of the aisle certainly utilizes their religiosity to forward issues um, like uh, opposing gay marriage and gay rights, um, even if it's not really contingent with their theology. They kind of use it as a tool in a way that I don't think that the left does. The left, if it does use it at all, uses it to connect to voters and to maybe bring out certain demographics versus using it as a, as a ploy to get certain people to think certain ways about issues. And AJ, you just said that most of this does come from the religious right. A lot of it we did hear from Rick Santorum, a couple of examples there in the story that we aired just a moment moment ago. Uh, but Rick Santorum is out of the race now. Now um, a lot of people are focusing on Mitt Romney, and he apparently is not immune to this. Um, here is a discussion uh, regarding his, his place in religion today. Uh, it was on CNN. Let's take a listen. 
the question that needs to be asked of Governor Romney, do you agree with the teaching of your church? If you do, but, that homosexual acts are offensive to God, then why but, have but you Brian, made the face of your campaign someone who engages in conduct that your own church but, says is offensive to God? But Brian, if you don't agree with your church, it, then how can you expect the evangelical base to support you? But, but we're talking about the separation of church and state here. So clearly, um, <laughs> the, the, he's bringing into the debate here the fact that one of his advisors is um, is gay, and, and for some reason, this is not seen as appropriate. There's this religious link uh, in this scenario. What do you think about that? I, I think it was just a pretty bogus interview right there. Just because you are a part of one religious sect or doctrine or creed or, or another doesn't mean that you agree with every single part of the religious principle uh, that's offered, whether you're Baptist, Catholic, Mormon. Uh, I mean, look at Catholics on birth control. The overwhelming majority of Catholics believe in the use of contraceptives and uh, other you know, uh, apparatuses and uh, don't go with the original teaching of the church. So just because you're a part of one religion doesn't mean that you have to lump in every single thing as your personal value. So I, I just don't find that to be a credible argument. All right, AJ, I'm going to let you respond to that. Sure, I agree that uh, just because you're part of a certain church or religion doesn't mean that you should agree with or do necessarily agree with all of their positions. However, I would love to see politicians come out, especially Mitt Romney and the Mormon Church, and say what specifically he doesn't agree with and what specifically he would do to, you know, um, act out against his church if he is comfortable talking about that, which we know he is not. Well, if that's the case with Mitt Romney, then we'd love to see Barack Obama uh, speak about Reverend Wright and the church he was in and all the very, very extreme positions that were taken and espoused right from the pulpit and have sure. answered those like questions as were not answered back in 2008 cycle. So I agree. I think they both should be, if they're both going to espouse it and attest to those religions and churches they're a part of, then let them both get on record and talk about if they want to be the leader of the free country, they need to talk about where they stand on these things. Now, at the center of this argument is this whole separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. um, and do you think that we, in fact, have that today? Oh, separation of church and state is a great misnomer as well. It was a letter from Thomas Jefferson to a group of uh, religious activists basically espousing how we were not to have one established religion like the English did at the time uh, for this country. And we were supposed to, in constitutional principles, the free exercise establishment of religion allows any religion, um, as long as it doesn't incite violence and other things like that, to be a part of American culture. Uh, so, uh, you know, that is the heart and soul of the argument there. And uh, the way that it has been manipulated to a core of the Constitution and in the Declaration, as many Americans think, is just a fraud. But there is, Daniel, a growing movement, um, uh, this growing secular movement that wants religion out of politics. And that poll that I mentioned earlier in that story shows that for the first time since 2001, more Americans think there is too much religion, religious talk in politics, um, and compared to those that think there is too little. Um, AJ, what do you think about this poll? Um, sure. I just uh, a bit of clarification there. The Thomas Jefferson letter was to the Dansbury Baptist, and he was actually trying to tell them that he was trying to keep church and state separate to protect both the government and the church. Um, but I, I would agree with the poll. I do think that there's far too much religious speak, and again, it, that it takes time away from the real issues. And uh, I would assume, AJ, that you would vote for an atheist. W would that matter to you? Of course I would vote for an atheist. It would not matter to me one way or the other. Uh, I do think that they would be more aligned with my positions. Um, certainly there's no secular reason to be against gay marriage or denying women health care. So I imagine that they would probably have many similar positions off the bat, but it would not be relevant to me. I would vote on the issues. And what about you? Is it relevant to you? Would you vote for an atheist? Uh, for me personally, it'd be a problem because I don't espouse the same personal belief system. So. That being aside, but I want to go back to an earlier point, talking about the polling. I've seen it go both ways. It kind of feeds back into a point of, uh, although I'd articulate it different, what's a real issue and not, um, about uh, AJ's point about the economy. And basically, there are, that's why Mitch Daniels on the right side of the aisle probably had it best, the governor of Indiana, talking about a truce doctrine on social issues 
and dealing with the fiscal tsunami, as he called it, that we have uh, presently to take care of. And I think that's why even the poll you indicated uh, is how it stands, too much religion, too much of this and that in politics. I think people really want progress, solutions, and things to be done in the economy in this country as the central core issue, and that's why we're seeing the sentiment of voters be like that right now. And I think I think you're correct in that in that way. Um, people that I talked to over that reason rally said that they were sick of hearing these kinds of issues like contraception, um, uh, you know, gay marriage. When we have this economic crisis on our hands, yet you are hearing a lot of this rhetoric coming from the GOP candidates. Um, but you said earlier that you wouldn't vote for an atheist. Why well, is that? Do you think that you, in order to be a good person, to have morals, that you need to be religious? No, I think atheism is a belief system, just like any other religion. It's a belief in no God, just like there's a belief in a God from more religious uh, individuals. So it's not a discriminatory thing. It's just not a personal thing I agree with. All right, AJ, I'll let you have the last word there. Um, well, I would just say atheism is to religion as off is to a television channel. It is actually not a religion in and of itself, nor is it a belief system in and of itself. It's the lack thereof. All right. Well, that was thank you both for coming on the show. We're out of time. An interesting debate there. That was Daniel Faraci. He is the director of Grassroots Political, Political Consulting, LLC, and A.J. Johnson, the De Development Director for American Atheists.